You know, in the world today, there's a lot of emphasis put on being strong. Well, you know, today in Daily Renewal, we're going to be talking about the fact that God actually says that He wants to be our strength in weakness. Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Lyle, and welcome to Daily Renewal. Well, today... I want to tackle the topic of relying in our own strength. You know, before I was a believer, I relied on my own strength for pretty near everything. You know, I, I trusted in myself. And there was often times where people would let me down and, and, I, and I felt like, you know what, I just need to get stronger. And, and I know I'm the only one I can trust. Well, and then I became a Christian and I realized that, that God wanted me to put my trust in Him. And in the beginning, that was very easy. But one thing you will find, that if you're not careful, the longer you go to church, the longer you're a follower of Jesus, the more messages you listen to, you need to be very careful to guard your heart against relying in your own strength again. So let's take a look at a story that involves King David. Now, this story you'll find in 2 Samuel 24, but you'll also find the same story uh, in 1 Chronicles 21. Now, I'll give you a little bit of background about what was going on here. You know, David in the early part of his life was somebody who trusted God. You know, we see, like for instance, when he, when he fought against Goliath, he was a young boy who hadn't even been trained in the military. He uh, didn't even wear regular armor when he fought Goliath, but he trusted God enough to go against uh, what was an absolutely terrifying individual. The entire nation of Israel was so terrified that they wouldn't even go out and fight him. And yet, yet David knew how to trust God beyond certain circumstance and as a result had an amazing victory for himself but also for the entire uh, entire army and nation of Israel but we find him later on in life as the king uh, you know he, he 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 gets into this stage of his life where he's had many victories and you'd think that if anybody knew how to trust God rather than put trust in himself it'd be David but in this particular uh, part, uh, part of his life, he decides one day that he wants to do a census and number the people of Israel. And there's a problem with this. In numbering the people of Israel, again, this is another, another study, but what he was doing is he, was, he, he set himself up where you're not he wasn't supposed to do that. They're God's people, and by numbering them, what he was saying is that they were his people. And yes, he was their king, but they were ultimately, Israel was God's people. So the idea of him numbering the people, many scholars will say that the problem with that was that David was entering into pride. David was numbering the people because he wanted to show his strength as a king. And, and as a result of numbering the people, he was... He was uh, he was uh, relying on the numbers of, of people rather than relying on God. So after this situation happens, he does the census, and even his military leader, Joab, tries to kind of warn him that, you know, this isn't a good thing that you're doing. And uh, anyway, it goes forth and does it, and then all of a sudden, you know, there's situations happen. Uh, God speaks to one of the prophets, David gets confronted, and David realizes that he's done something absolutely terrible. Well, there's consequences, and God uh, gives him uh, three choices on what can happen to him. He says, you have the choice between three years of famine, three years of your enemy uh, invading you, or three days of plague. Well, David, you know, he doesn't want to see his enemies have victory over him, so he decides on the plague. So, so God comes in, and this plague is coming through the land, and uh, you know, people are getting destroyed. And finally, and this is where we come to verse 15 uh, of chapter 21 of 1 Chronicles, this is what happens. It says, And God sent an angel to Jerusalem to destroy it. And he was, destroy, uh, he was destroying, and the Lord looked and relented of the disaster and said to the angel who was destroying, It is enough. Now restrain your hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. Well, this is an interesting part of the story. Ornan the Jebusite. 
And this is why I also relayed that the story is in uh, 2 Samuel as well, is because in the story, the man's name is pronounced differently, or it sounds like a different name. His name was, uh, was Arana. And if you study this out, Arana and Ornan, they are the same name, and they have the same meaning. Now, so we go on, and in uh, and that's important. I'll come back to that. In verse 18, it says, Therefore the angel of the Lord commanded Gad to say to David, Gad was the prophet, that David should go and erect an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. So again, we see this, this guy who owned this threshing floor. David comes up, the angel stops at one particular place. First question, why did he stop at this guy's threshing floor? Well, when you study out what Ornan's name was, and remember, in, in, in all of these places in the scripture, names have meaning. If you go back into the Hebrew to, to, and you see what this guy's name was, both Ornan and Arana, the root meaning of his name was strength. So here is David. David is trying to, he takes a census to show everybody how strong he is. God gets upset with him because of pride. He's trying to flaunt his own strength. He's, he, he, he's, he's, he's flexing his own muscles. So God brings a plague, and as the plague's going on, David wants to stop the plague. Well, the angel of the Lord stops at the threshing floor of a guy whose the root of his name is strength. In other words, it's like this. David, you think you're strong. I'm going to show you what strength is. He stops and confronts him on his very sin. Yes, his sin was pride, but it was because it was based on his own strength. So the threshing floor of a guy whose root, the root of his name is strength, he says, I want you to put an altar here. What's an altar? I want you to remember this forever. And if you do the history study of this, and, and you can find this, uh, in, in 2 Chronicles 3, 1, when Solomon actually builds the temple. What's the temple? The temple was to harness the power and presence of God. Well, the temple that Solomon actually built was built on the threshing floor of Arana or Ornan. In other words, it was built on the very place where God told David to build an altar uh, on the place of strength. The place of strength is the place of the presence of God. That repre was represented in, uh, the, in the, the tabernacle or the temple that Solomon built. Amazing how that all works together. See, we have to remember that God knew who was going to own that threshing floor. He knew where that temple was going to be built years before, before. Before man even existed, he knew where this place would be. And so here we see a great example of God saying, saying to David, and he says this to us, my power and my presence, my strength is in, you will find it in me. You're not going to find it in yourself. So what's the lesson for today? The source of our strength has to be found in him. It can't be in us. You know, uh, if you find yourself in a, in a position in your life, maybe you've gone to church for years, and just because you've gone to church and you can quote scripture, we need to, from time to time, do an inventory in our life. You know, what, what is it, you know, why do we go to church? Do we spend time in prayer? Do we spend time in the word? You know, do an analysis. Are you enjoying your walk with God? And if you're not, it's probably because you're not spending time with him. Just because we've been doing this a long time, it doesn't mean we can't become complacent. In fact, it's very likely that we will be complacent if we're not constantly analyzing and, and just spending time with Jesus. You know, in Proverbs 3, it says this in verse 5, starting in verse 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. So the question are you walking in your ways? Have you allowed some of your ways to creep in to the point where you're, where you're not even really wondering what his ways are anymore? We think we know them, yeah, but are they deep down in our hearts so that they pour out in everything we do? 
is our walk with God based on an everyday relationship with Jesus. If it is, we're going to be okay. And we do have repentance as well if we are off track, which is great. But ultimately, we can't afford to become complacent. So, having said that, I hope you got something out of that today. I hope you were challenged. I'm challenged by it. I want to I wanna constantly be moving ahead in my walk with Christ. So having said that, I just want to remind you, if you uh, are getting things out of these videos, share them with as many people as you can. Also, uh, if, if you uh, would like to consider even subscribing to our YouTube channel below, it'll help you see when the videos are available. We do them, uh, try to do Monday to Friday, five days a week. Uh, also, uh, you can like us on Facebook, and we're on Twitter and Instagram as well. Uh, and if you're in the Kamloops area, please feel free to uh, drop by River City Church. We'd love to have you. Having said that, God bless you, and have a great day.